From the food we eat, the air we breathe, the land we dwell, to the health of our body and mind, and the well-being of all things in the universe. Unlock the science with Chula Radio Plus. Welcome to Unlock the Science. I'm Virada Salim. Blood is a vital component of our body. It is a constantly circulating fluid, carrying oxygen and nutrients to our organs and removing metabolic waste out of the body. Blood is thicker than water because it consists of numerous cells and proteins. An average person has with him about five liters of blood. Usually, when we bleed, our body has mechanism to stop the bleeding, so we don't lose too much of our blood. However, in people with bleeding disorders, the blood clotting process doesn't work properly. Therefore, they can bleed for longer than normal, and some people may experience internal bleeding at their joints, muscles, or other parts of their bodies, which can lead to developmental and permanent mobility issues. This disorder is known as hemophilia. Hemophilia is a bleeding problem. People with hemophilia do not bleed any faster than normal, but they can bleed for a longer time. Their blood does not have enough clotting factors, which are proteins in our body that control bleeding, according to World Federation of Hemophilia, a non-profit organization based in Montreal, Canada, which is dedicated to people with hemophilia around the world. The organization works in partnership with healthcare providers, governments, and network of national member organizations in 147 countries. Let's look at the process in our body in stopping blood bleeding. When a blood vessel is injured, the walls of the blood vessel contract to limit the flow of blood to damaged area. Then, small blood cells called palates stick to the site of injury and spread along the surface of the blood vessel to stop the bleeding. At the same time, chemical signals are released from small sacs inside the platelets that attract other cells to the area and make them clump together to form what is called a platelet plug. On the surface of these activated platelets, many different clotting factors work together in a series of complex chemical reactions to form a fibrin clot. The clot acts like a mesh to stop the bleeding. In people suffering from hemophilia, their blood does not have enough of these clotting factors or has very, very little of it. Therefore, when they are wounded, they bleed longer. In serious cases of hemophilia, the persons bleed internally without suffering from any injury which could damage their internal organs. Hemophilia is passed on through a parent's genes. This means people are born with hemophilia, and the disease is non-contagious as it cannot spread from one person to another. However, sometimes hemophilia can occur when there is no family history of it. This is called sporadic hemophilia. About 30% of people with hemophilia did not get it through their parents' genes. It was caused by a change in the person's own genes, according to the World Federation of Hemophilia. The hemophilia genes are on the X chromosome. Therefore, hemophilia is called an X-linked or sex-linked disorder. And since men have only one X chromosome, while women have two, men are much more prone to hemophilia. Women, however, can be carrier of the affected genes and pass the genes to their children. The World Federation of Hemophilia says that in rare cases, a person can develop hemophilia later in life. The majority of these cases involve middle-aged or elderly people or young women who have recently given birth or are in the later stage of pregnancy. This condition often results with appropriate treatment. People with hemophilia could have troubles in an activity as simple as seeing their dentist for pulling out a tooth, as they could lose much more blood in the process than normal people. However, internal bleeding in hemophilia patients is a more worrying situation, as the patients may not be aware of it, and the bleeding could damage their internal organs. For instance, normally, Joint deterioration usually happens to elderly people, 
but for hemophilia patients, their joints could be damaged as young as in their 20s. If the internal bleeding continues regularly, the patients could suffer pain in their joints or eventually become disabled. And in the case that internal bleeding happens at their brain, it could become fatal. Hemophilia can be detected by blood testing, and the conditions are categorized into mild, moderate, and severe in accordance with the level of clotting factors in their body. Normal people carry 100% of the clotting factors. For mild condition of hemophilia, the factors dropped to 5 to 40% of normal people, and in moderate condition, it shrinks to 1 to 5%. In severe condition, the factors are less than 1%, and this is when blood can simply bleed internally without any injury. People with severe hemophilia may bleed as frequently as once or twice a week. Bleeding is often spontaneous, which means it happens for no obvious reason. Hemophilia can be treated by injecting clotting factors or factor concentrates into the body through the vein using needles. Traditionally, injection is applied as the bleeding occurs, known as episodic treatment. In simple terms, patients inject factor concentrates only when they bleed. However, since they already suffer from bleeding, their organs could be affected. But at Faculty of Medicine, Jolalongon University, emphasis is given to preventive measures or prophylaxis in trying to prevent patients from bleeding by injecting factor concentrates on a regular basis, in raising the volume of clotting factors in patients' body. Younger patients have become more adapted to injecting factor concentrates by themselves or by family members on a regular basis in preventing bleeding, while only a small number of adult patients are keen on the prophylaxis treatment. A Lock the Science editor and producer, Sinfa Tansarawut, talks to Associate Professor Dr. Darin Sosotikun, a hematologist at the Department of Pediatrics, Faculty of Medicine, Jolalongkorn University, and an expert in hemophilia in Thailand on the impact of this disease and the current and future treatment for the patients. As an expert in hemophilia in Thailand, what are the concerns or problems regarding treatment of hemophilia patients in Thailand at the moment? Uh, as a pediatric hematologist who dealing with the hemophilia treatment in Thailand for 20 years, I have to say that now today, uh, the treatment of hemophilia um, in Thailand have been developed continuously. From the past, Hemophilia care is available only in medical school. At present, more than 50 centers are available for the hemophilia care, which include the treatment, prevention, and education of the patients and their families. Well, my concerns are, firstly, the inconvenience of the travel to the hemophilia care center particularly who live in remote areas, which may decrease the compliance and delay the treatment of bleeding. Therefore, we can do better in the future by having the hemophilia centers in every province of Thailand. The second concern is the current treatment for Thai hemophilia patients is episodic or on-demand treatment, which gives the factor concentrate only when bleeding occurs. Therefore, the patients still suffer from recurrent joint bleeding, leading to the long-term joint sequelae and become handicapped. As all you know that the standard treatment of hemophilia is prophylaxis. By giving the factor concentrate to prevent bleeding at all time, or I would say that to modify the severity of the disease from the severe phenotype to my or moderate phenotype. So they do, do not have the spontaneous bleeding, which decreases the long-term complication. 
Is there any major difference in treating a child and adult with hemophilia? Well, uh, definite. Uh, the hemophilia care in children have some difference from adults, although the factor replacement care is the same. But I would like to show you the result uh, from the data survey of the hemophilia treatment in Thailand in the year 2020. Well, almost two thirds of children with hemophilia were on prophylaxis, but only 20% of adults with hemophilia were on prophylaxis. The reason why the two major challenges for the adult with hemophilia who did not participate in prophylaxis. The first one is the poor venous assays. Therefore, they cannot do the cell infusion at home. And the second one is the limited budget from the Thai National Health Security Office due to the overweight or obesity. These two reasons cause them to receive the episodic treatment. Normally they have the limit budget according to the weight and age. But sometimes, you know, like if you want to to, to receive like um, quite a lot of, you know, factor, they still have limited. Um, so this is why the reason that we would like to keep the patient, you know, like um, uh, to be slim. Huh? And then like um, if they become overweight, sometimes they can um, uh, like uh, make the all the joy, especially the knee joy or ankle joy to receive the, you know, like a body weight, uh, um, like a high, the heavy weight, and they can cause recurrent uh, bleeding. So this is why, you know, the reason that uh, we try to, or the, this reason we try to keep the, the patient like uh, in the slim or in the, in, in the, in the, in healthy by encourage them to do a lot of exercise um, like uh, to, to maintain the, the, the normal weight, than the overweight. What do people with hemophilia be most worried or concerned about their body condition? Are there anything that they should not do at all? Yeah, uh, hemophilia patients should note when the serious bleeding occurs in certain organs, such as the brain, or internal organs mostly um, occur after the car accident or motor motorcycle accidents or the contact sports. For example, the football or fighting or et cetera. Uh, people with hemophilia should receive the factor concentrate before the playing sports. Well, uh, the recommend sports for hemophilia patients include uh, swimming, cycling, jogging, uh, table tennis, etc. And also uh, they should avoid all medication that can cause uh, easy bleeding, such as the aspirin or NSAID for the painkiller. Okay. Currently, hemophilia patients can receive factor concentrate free of charge under Thailand health insurance program. Do you think all the patients have been receiving the medicines? Are there anyone who have been left out? Well, it's a very important question. Um, as in the parents of the hemophilia in Thailand is about like uh, 5,000 patients, roughly. But actually right now, only 2,000 patients were officially registered in the Thai hemophilia registry. The remaining of the 60%, I would say, could be the mild or moderate of hemophilia who do not have uh, like um, frequent bleedings. So they don't come to see the doctor. So this is... Uh, a reason why they are not registered or assessed to the hemophilia centers. Could you share with us the current development of gene therapy for hemophilia patients in the world? 
Is there a high hope about it? And will it be available for Thai patients in the near future? Well, um, it's very, you know, like a good question. As all you know that the hemophilia is a genetic disease. And the only way to kill this disease is the gene therapy. Which are similar, which is similar to the success um, of the stem cell transplantation to kill the genetic blood disease, such as the thalassemia. Um, however, there are several concerns regarding the gene therapy in hemophilia. For example, um, it cannot uh, be performed in patients with the inhibitors or hemophilia patient with the underlying liver disease, such as the hepatitis C. And also in children who are ongoing proliferation of the liver cells. So they may dilute the number of the viral genomes as well as the factors levels. And also in the long-term complication in terms of the develop of the cancer in the future. However, right now, the gene therapy in hemophilia is an experiment, experimental study, but not the standard of care. We still need more clinical study to confirm the safety of the gene therapy in hemophilia patient, especially in children. Well, in Thailand, I think like in the near, in next uh, five years, we will do the uh, clinical uh, like a trial of the gene therapy in hemophilia, but we still need the, the efficacy data and the safety data to support. That is Unlock the Science editor and producer Sinfa Tansarawut talking to Associate Professor Dr. Darin Saw Sotigun of Department of Pediatrics, Faculty of Medicine, Jualongkorn University. We will take a short break now. You are listening to Unlock the Science on Chula Radio Plus. A record by the World Federation of Hemophilia showed that in 2020, there were over 1,800 reported hemophilia patients in Thailand, almost equally divided among males who are younger than 18 and those older than 18. But observers noted that the actual number of patients in Thailand could be higher. There are two types of hemophilia, A and B. Hemophilia A lacks blood clotting factor 8, while hemophilia B lacks factor 9. Hemophilia A is more common than type B, but the two types are not much different in their symptoms. Some people who are unaware that they are hemophilic and are not careful in doing activities that could injure themselves could suffer either external or internal bleeding or both. For young hemophilic patients, they could have troubles going to school as internal bleeding causes painful swelling in their joints and are refrained from playing strenuous sports or doing tough activities. This affects their quality of life. Treatment aims to allow them to enjoy activities of normal people by raising the level of clotting factors in their body. In the old days, patients would receive treatment only when they suffered bleeding. Nowadays, people with hemophilia can inject factor concentrates into their vein by themselves at home, and currently, doctors are encouraging patients to inject this factor concentrates before any bleeding in allowing them to enjoy better quality of life. These preventive measures or prophylaxis could save them from internal bleeding that could damage their joints or other internal organs. Injection needs to be carried out a few times per week. The measure has become more practical after Thailand's National Health Security Office includes factor concentrates in its national list of essential medicines that can be dispensed free of charge. Currently, hemophilia is incurable, and patients have to live with it throughout their life. However, gene therapy could be their hope as their defective genes will be rectified. 
we will hear story of a person with hemophilia. e g a w a t s u w a n t a r o d vice president of Thai Hemophilia Patient Club, shares his experience with a l o c t o science editor and producer Sin Fa Tan s a r a w u t e g a w a t is now 45 years old. His parents discovered that he is hemophilic since he was just four months old. He lived through his young age when treatment of hemophilia in Thailand was still rare. He earned his bachelor's degree from Faculty of Education, j u l a l o n g k o n University, and furthers his study in the United States. He currently runs a graphic design business of his own. Hello, Kun e k w a t Could you share with Unlock the Science the situation of person with hemophilia when you were a child and a teenager? My childhood is really rough uh, because 40 years ago, hemophilia was not uh, recognized in Thai society. And not many doctors uh, knew about hemophilia. Uh, I kind of lucky that I I was born in Bangkok, so I close to the, the medical hospital. Uh, but it's still uh, very difficult for my parents to uh, raise me uh, because we have to travel to the hospital every time that I have uh, internal breathing. So when we talk about uh, breathing disorder, people thought uh, is kind of uh, external breathing, like you get cut uh, by the knife. But uh, hemophilia is. Usually, we have a joint breathing uh, and a muscle breathing. So that means any time that you hit with uh, anything, it can cause you uh, breathing. And I cannot stop stop breathing by myself. So I need the treatment product. Uh, I lost many schools because I had to travel to the hospital, and the next day I have missed school. Uh, I cannot play like a normal boy. Uh, at tech spot, I cannot. Uh, so my teacher cannot hit me. That's a good thing. Uh, but it's still a difficult childhood uh, for my in my generation. Do you think now t h a t a y people with hemophilia live a more comfortable life than before? Yes. Uh, now t h a t a y the medication for hemophilia improves a lot. And many uh, doctors uh, knows about hemophilia because of the government, uh, by the National Health Security Office, uh, have the program 10 years ago to support hemophilia. Uh, like I said, when I was a kid, uh, my parent had to take me to the hospital to get the the treatment product, and then uh, I had to wait for the hospital process. Waiting so many process in hospital, so when I start to have a small, a minor breathing, it's become a major breathing, uh, and the next day I have to miss school. Uh, but now today, the, the government uh, gives uh, the treatment product, the factor eight and factor nine, to the to the uh, to the family to the patients. t h e y can keep at home, so you, they can do the cell infusion at home any time that they feel like. They have a small breathing in any places in their body. The Thai Hemophilia well, Patient Club has been doing a lot of things for its members. Um, recently, you initiate an English language uh, class, and you also uh, encourage your member to do exercise. Does does your club has any other plan in the near future for your? For your members, uh, yes, both program we will continue uh, this year, uh, and also we try to uh, have a youth program uh, because the the new generation of hemophilia they tend to have a different perspective from my generation. Mm-hmm. Uh, my generation, uh, cell infusion is. Is a punish punishment. You not you do do you do, do not go to take care of yourself. So you get to do you get a factor. 
But right now, like I said, prophylaxis program is totally different. So we try to encourage the young generation to have a cell infusion and they can go to school, they can go to work. So things, things will change right now. So we, we need to get the youth group uh, to participate in our club and create the idea of how they're going to live with their hemophilia in the next five or 10 years, how they would like to see the future of hemophilia in Thailand. Gene therapy could be the ultimate cure for hemophilia patients. If it's going to be available with an affordable price in Thailand, would you subject yourself to the therapy? Uh, I, I would say yes, uh, but they have so many factors to, uh, to make a, a decision in this case. Uh, uh, it's mean, if they have the, 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 the scientific evidence, uh, they have a result, they have the, uh, uh, a period of the patient who get, uh, the gene therapy, uh, five years, 10 years, and I know that they don't have a, 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 a short-term side effect and a long-term side effect from uh, this uh, innovation. Uh, so I would say, yes, I will uh, jump into this <laughs> ter therapy. Associate Professor Dr. Darin So Sotikun said that the treatment of hemophilia patients in Thailand has been advancing. However, a large number of patients who are not registered with the authorities and live in remote areas may not have proper access to the factor concentrates needed for preventing blood bleeding. She said gene therapies for hemophilia patients remains an experiment at the moment, but she could possibly participate in the therapy when it becomes available in Thailand. For a patient like Ekawat, he also views that current quality of life of people with hemophilia is better than before, as better medication has become more available and accessible. And his club has been working to helping its members to enjoy a better living. Unlock the Science would like to thank Associate Professor Dr. Darin Sosotikun of Department of Pediatrics, Faculty of Medicine, Jalalongon University, and Ekawat Suwantarod, Vice President of Thai Hemophilia Patient Club, for sharing information and thoughts on hemophilia. I hope you enjoy our program. You can listen to Unlock the Science on Jula Radio Plus at FM 101.5 every Saturday from 1 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. You can also listen and follow us on our website, curadio.jula.ac.th, and our Facebook page. Our show is also accessible as podcasts, including on Apple and Spotify. See you again next Saturday. Have a nice day. Unlock the Science is edited and produced by Sinfa Tunsorawood. <laughs>